Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about how Christians have responded to plague over the centuries, and I hope that you enjoy this and it gives you some wisdom for the days ahead. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, would you consider doing that? Also, if you haven't hit that notification bell, make sure you do that as well. We're looking forward to today's video. The recent COVID-19 outbreak has brought our attention to the unavoidable reality of plague that has frequently been a part of human history. Starting in Wuhan, China, COVID-19 spread rapidly throughout every major continent in the world, leading to panic buying, government-mandated quarantines, social distancing, and a higher awareness of hygiene practices. With the CDC in the U.S., issuing guidelines asking for gatherings of no more than 10 people to be canceled, churches across the nation have wondered what is God calling them to do in response. As with many events in the modern world, it's important to let history be our ultimate teacher in this regard. We need to take a close look at how the Christian church has responded to plague and outbreak throughout history and learn from what they did, both good and bad. The amazing reality that we begin to realize when looking at the Christian response to pandemic throughout history is that in most instances, it caused the Christian message to spread even as rapidly as the epidemic itself. With the fear and pandemonium that is spreading across the world throughout our various communication portals, just like the virus, it has become critical for the church to think strategically during this critical moment in modern history. How can we leverage ourselves to spread the message of Jesus, His faith, hope, and love throughout this dark and depressing time? When people are faced with the reality of death, we find an openness to the things of God like never before. This is our chance to share the gospel with people and be the light of the world that we have been called to be from the very beginning. Now, one of the earliest Christian responses to pandem uh, pandemic in history was in the second century AD during the Antonine Plague. This small po smallpox type plague spread rapidly throughout the Roman army and ult ultimately throughout the entire empire. At its peak, it killed 2,000 people per day for over 23 years, and it killed as much as 10% of the Roman population as a whole. During this horrible outbreak, Christians took risky measures to care for the sick, and as a result, they shifted the societal perspective from thinking that plague was the work of an angry Roman deity to understanding it to be the result of living in a broken world that is in rebellion against its creator. Just a century later there in the 3rd century AD, Christians responded to another famous plague, or shall we say infamous plague, called the Plague of Cyprian. The pl this plague was related to the modern Ebola disease that recently spread throughout some northern African countries and beyond. The plague lasted nearly 20 years and at its height it reportedly killed as many as 5,000 people per day in Rome. A church bishop of the time called Dionysius stated that Christians, heedless of danger, took charge of the sick, attending to their every need. And as a result, the message of Christianity spread like wildfire throughout the Roman Empire once again, leading up to the final legalization of the Christian faith not long after by the Emperor Constantine. If we zoom forward over 1,200 years later to the infamous bubonic plague in the 1500s, we find the church maintaining a consistent philosophy of caring for the sick and responding to pandemic with courageous fortitude. The famous Martin Luther, responsible for the Protestant Reformation, wrote a tract during this plague entitled, Whether Christians Should Flee the Plague. In this tract, Luther exhorts leaders in every sector of society, as well as pastors, to not abandon their posts during the plague, but rather to leverage their influence to care for the sick and share the gospel with a dying world. In addition to this, Luther, in other writings, admonishes Christians to not conduct themselves as bad neighbors by using bad hygiene and failing to adhere to quarantine orders and so forth. Here we find the tension between obeying the Great Commission 
and also using God's wisdom to not participate in the spread of disease to our neighbors. It is within this tension that we must live, not hiding away behind a wall of toilet paper and hand sanitizer, and also not disobeying governing authorities who seek to keep diseases from rapidly transmitting. We have to think strategically with the heart of Christ regarding how we can care for the sick and hopeless during this moment of crisis around the globe. The Christian response to COVID-19 is going to require a certain measure of risk, outside of the box thinking and respect for governing authorities. I personally concur with Martin Luther as he admonished the church and other critical first responders to not abandon their post during the plague of the 1500s. I also concur that we must take drastic measures to act as good neighbors and not participate in the spread of disease through things like good hygiene and social awareness of those who may be sick around us and avoiding that. Somewhere in between these two realities, we will find God doing a new thing and making streams in the wilderness, as it states in Isaiah 43, 19. We've got to be led by the Holy Spirit and willing to take a risk to care for those in need. And we shouldn't draw back in fear, but find strategic ways to share the gospel through every available avenue during this time of panic and despair. So what are some of the things that we can do to respond to the epidemic in a way that honors God? I want to give you a couple of my own suggestions. Number one, if you're a first responder and you're a Christian, this is an opportunity to see your work as an extension of the kingdom of God like never before. Recognize that everywhere you go, you are an ambassador of the kingdom and in, 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 in the king's presence, God's presence, goes with you to protect you and influence others with the love of Jesus. See yourself not only as a medical professional, but as a chaplain for the kingdom of God. Now, if you're a pastor or if you're a church leader like myself, be willing to take some strategic risks to minister to those who are in need. But also leverage modern technology to communicate with those who may be in a bad spot and need an uplifting word or someone to pray with. People are more open to the gospel right now than we've seen in decades. And so we've got to be diligent to get the message out to them. On a basic and practical level, we need to take time to call friends and loved ones and people that we haven't reached out to in a while and just check on them. I think that this personal touch will just give people the understanding that we really do care about them, and it might open a door for us to share the love of Jesus with them. Because people are in a bad spot in many cases, especially those who haven't been close to God in recent days. So reach out to people. Another thing that I want to say is if you have, you know, have somebody that you know of that's been diagnosed with the disease, take steps to communicate this with the local church and organize people to begin praying for this individual. And I really think we shouldn't underestimate the power of targeted prayer during this epidemic because God is still the God that works miracles. Those were just a few suggestions that you could think about as we attempt to be ambassadors of God's kingdom during this dark time period. But at the end of the day, we need to be opening our ears to the voice of the Holy Spirit to show us individual uh, individually, how we can shine the light of Christ during this crucial moment. We got to undertake some strategic risk. We've got to have good hygiene. We've got to obey any reasonable recommendations from the government. But we also need to remember that this too shall pass and God's kingdom will remain standing no matter how big of a challenge our world will face in the coming years. I want to just remind you if you do not have a personal relationship with God, there has never been a better time to have His presence in your life than right now. He gave His only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins so that we can be forgiven and have eternal life. No matter what happens, we can be sure of eternal life. All you have to do is call upon Jesus in prayer, ask Him to save you, and He'll be faithful to do just that. Whenever we call upon Jesus in faith, the relationship with God that we've always needed begins in an instant. So I encourage you to do this if you've never done it before. And just let me know in the comments how I can be praying for you. God bless, and I'm looking forward to talking to you guys soon.
Hey, I want to thank you for watching today's video. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, make sure you do that. Also, hit the notification bell so that you will be notified of our next episode. I wish you the best, and we're going to be praying for you as we get through this COVID-19 crisis. God is on the throne, and He is not in crisis. Amen?